everybody from BNI. It's been almost a year I've been here. You welcomed me like family, and you've given me amazing referrals, and I really appreciate everybody in this group, and I consider them friends and family. So anything I can do or extend my services to you, I will make sure I go out of my way. So today, hopefully, we're going to make a topic that everybody likes a little bit interesting, which is making money. Does everybody here like to make money? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to pretend the entire room is a brand new client, and you're coming to me and you're asking questions that a new investor would ask. And I answer these questions every single week. So, typically, we get asked, why should I invest in commercial real estate? Is my original investment protected? How does it compare to, let's say, investing in a Fortune 500 stock? How do I value a commercial property? If I don't want to buy a commercial property, what about if I buy a business? How do I value a business? What if I buy a business that's only cash? How do I value that? If I decide to go with these things, what are some great examples I can give you from a person who's wealthy to a person who's middle class and wants to become wealthy? So I'm going to try to try try to tie everything together for you guys. And I also want to thank Valerie and Evelyn for coming. They're here for my staff. Uh, Valerie specializes in restaurants and Evelyn in leasing. Uh, at the end of the meeting, they'd be happy to answer any questions you have for them specifically. So let's start with why should I buy a commercial property? And it's funny because investing, no matter who you are or what you're investing in, comes down to you. You have to invest in something that you personally love and you're personally passionate about. Warren Buffett says this. He's the number one investor of all time. I would think he knows what he's talking about. Now, if you're someone like me, when you grew up, you used to love playing Monopoly. I would buy the railroads and play with the real estate pieces. I fantasized about the day I grew up and I could play the same game. So what I typically tell clients is, if you're going to say buy an apartment building, you have to be passionate about collecting rent, as crazy as it sounds. You have to be passionate about renovating a unit, knowing how to go there and rebuild an apartment. You have to be unemotional if it comes to kicking out someone who's not paying you money. If you can do these things, then you can invest in commercial real estate. The second rule to investing, which Warren Buffett teaches us, is to know, you, know what you're investing in. If you don't know anything about real estate, you hire somebody like me to teach it to you. And then you can do your homework yourself. So if we've established that you want to invest in something that you love, and you're passionate about it, the next step comes to, am I going to lose any money if I invest in it? Well, if you're like me and you're crazy about real estate, you've read a number of books and you go search everything on the internet, you'll find out that top economists studying real estate back over 100 years will say that real estate goes in cycles every 15 to 18 years. There's usually a period of moderate growth, a period where real estate goes up 3 to 5% every year for around seven to eight years. We're in this period right now you can't recognize it. After that period, there's a boom period. Greed takes over. Demand is high. Lending is very easy. And inventory becomes low. Everybody saw this period. I hope some of you took advantage of it. <laughs> Next, you have the unfortunate bust period. This typically lasts two to three years. But with that comes an amazing opportunity. All these periods I talked about, there's only two times where you could lose money. It's the last two years of the boom period and the first year and a half of the bust period. If you buy at any other time in the cycle, you will not lose any principal according to what I've studied and researched and what I can show you and your clients. So now, how does this compare to, let's say, a Fortune 500 stock? The best company I can think of in the United States today worth almost $300 billion. Apple. Everybody knows Apple, right? Yep. What if you had a million dollars and you invested in Apple six months ago? You know what that million dollars would be worth today? Six hundred thousand. Apple stock went from seven hundred dollars to four hundred thirty-nine dollars this afternoon. Wow, that's not good. You know what would have happened if you invested in commercial real estate? Your one million dollars would have been one million dollars. And that's what I tell people when I see them. So we're going to now talk about how to value commercial property. There's a million fancy terms and things we can discuss, but we're going to try to make it simple in this room. We're going to talk about cap rates. 
we're going to take a property that you're going to buy for a million dollars. Let's say it has a gross income of $120,000 a year. That income has expenses. Let's say the expenses are $50,000 a year, and you net, at the end of the year, $70,000. You take your $70,000 profit, and you divide it by your purchase price of $1 million. That gives you a 7 cap, or a 7% return on your investment. Most buildings in Miami sell between a 4 and 10 cap. So everybody can put that in perspective. Now, you might say to yourself, well, why would I buy something at a 4 cap as opposed to a 10 cap? You might think, you're nuts. Well, I'm going to give you two great examples. One of them was in the Daily Business Review. It was the Bank United building in South Beach on Alton Road. That building sold at a 4 cap. Now, for that same money, you could have bought a 94-unit building in Miami Beach, North Miami Beach, I apologize, with a 7.5 cap. So why would an investor go out of his way to park his money in something that makes 4% as opposed to 7.5%? Well, I can tell you that goes back to lifestyle. Most likely, the investor who bought that 4% Bank United building wanted an easy investment with an easy return. That Bank United building was guaranteed by a very strong tenant. It had the tenant paying the expenses of the building. Every month, all you have to do is wake up and look at the money in your account. Now, if you had somebody who's local and had more time to get involved in his real estate, I would have encouraged them to go for the 94-unit building. And that's the difference. You most likely had someone who was international who didn't want to deal with the headaches of real estate as opposed to somebody who wants to get their hands dirty and reap the benefits of double the income. So now that we've correctly evaluated a commercial property, some clients, uh, they're greedy and they say, it's not enough money, Peter. It's not enough that I can make six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent 10% income. I want to buy a business. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what's the value and the difference between buying a business and sticking with commercial real estate. When you buy a business, you're usually buying an income stream. So the best example how we're going to make it extremely simple is we're going to take an average business, let's say uh, pizzeria. Pizzeria makes $100,000 per year. Now, this pizzeria, let's say, has a profit of $50,000 per year. Typically, I would value a business, which is a small cap business, anything under $10 million, at between two and five times its net income. So if I have a pizzeria that's making $50,000 a year, that business would be worth, let's say, $150,000 to $250,000. Now, if the owner comes to me and says, well, I also have X amount of inventory, we would add the inventory to that business. And that's as simple as it gets for evaluating any type of business. Now, it gets tricky because several times we'll have clients who say, I want to buy a cash-only business. So you show up to this amazing business, and I'm going to give you guys some you know, good examples. Uh, we'll stick with the pizzeria analogy. We show up to the business, my clients are very savvy pizzeria owners, and the owner claims to make three times what he's declaring on his tax return. Now would anybody here give their money to someone who says, trust me? <laughs> so how do you figure out this puzzle? Well, my client, being very savvy, says, I can definitely figure this out. Give me your receipts for your pizza, your dough, and your cheese. Uh, based on that, I can figure out how many pizzas you're making and selling. That owner wouldn't give him those numbers. I advised him not to do the deal because he couldn't prove his income. Another example would be a car wash. Same thing. You'll always hear the same story. In this particular deal, I worked out with my clients where we would enter into what's called a, no, um, a look period which is a period where you put a certain amount of money in escrow and you shadow the owner for a month. After a month, you're watching him collect his income and pay his bills. If that's satisfactory to what he's telling you, you can move forward with your deal. So that's an idea of how to value a business versus a commercial property. I'm going to end with a business part where to see the difference in returns. Last week I was working on a deal on 71st Street, which is the Chevron, the Chevron gas station. That business was selling for 1.5 million. Its annual sales were around 3 million. Its net income was around 400,000. It was priced at three and a half times net income, or 30% return on your investment. That's why some people would buy a business versus a commercial real estate. 
So I'm going to end with three examples on how to tie everything together. <clears throat> if anybody here is like me, I fantasize about winning the lottery tonight. The Powerball is $165 million. My fantasies are a little bit different from everyone else's because if I win, I would encourage everybody to buy commercial real estate. <laughs> I'm a little biased. <laughs> and that's because 50% of people go broke in under five years winning the lottery. It's very easy to happen because if you bought a home on Star Island and you bought a fleet of cars and you bought a boat and you support an entourage, you'd be surprised what expenses pile up. If you bought a home in Star Island, it would cost you a million dollars a year to maintain and that could eat away your money. If you won the Powerball tonight and you had a lump sum payment of $80 million and you put $10 million on the side and you invested in commercial real estate with the other 70, you would make $125,000 per week on your investment. And you know what you could do at $125,000 per week? You could buy a house on Star Island, a fleet of cars, a boat, and you could support all your friends and family. <laughs> And you'd still have $70 million in the bank that would double or triple over 30 years. So, two more examples and then I'm done. The second example I'm going to give you is probably hit home if we can't win the lotto. What do we do if we're a middle income American who's in the falling middle class? This is a couple who, let's say, is in their 30s, who got married, each makes $75,000 per year. This couple, by the time they retire, will most likely have little to no assets. These are statistics you can look up. Now, if you don't want to end up like these people, let's say we put them on a plan where they save between 25 and 30 percent of their income. If they do this and they invest in real estate every five years, buying a certain building at that point in time, I've calculated numbers that I can email to everybody into this group. They would have bought seven buildings. Seven buildings. They would have accumulated between 180 and 194 units. They would have had a gross income of close to $200,000 per month and a net income of close to $140,000 per month. Those seven buildings without inflation would have been worth $15 million. They would have went from a very poor middle class to the top 1% of America. These people are not anything special. It would be somebody who was disciplined enough to say, I'm 30 years old, I'm going to make a plan until I'm 60. Now, what's the last example I can give, and then I'll end my, my presentation? Well, that's a personal example of mine. How do I know everything I said works? Well. Most of you who know from my two-minute presentation know I come from a family who invested in real estate and had very little education. My dad's second building that he bought, it took him five years to buy. It was a 25-unit building in Queens. That building he paid around $260,000. He bought it 39 years ago next, next month. Today, that building has a gross income of $400,000 per year and a net of three hundred. dollars if you do those numbers, he makes 125 or 150 percent on his initial investment every single year. The appraised value of this building is close to four million dollars. If you do those numbers, that's a 1,500 percent on his initial investment. If you add and compound all the income plus the appraised value, that's a 3,000 percent initial return on his investment with a fifth grade education. So, do I believe in my product? Yes. Is everything I told you accurate? I 100% believe so. So I hope you guys will consider me as a commercial realtor. Thank you for your time.